Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith is far and away the most divisive of any of the Star Wars films to date. It's liked by some, hated by others, and exists as the most unique entry in the canon. It's what a lot of people say is the best prequel, and is close to being as good as the originals. While I disagree with the latter, I'll give you the former. Yes, next to The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, this film is the best of the three. But does that make it good? Some say yes. Some say no, and I say, well, here goes. Hey everybody, Alex here for Nerdy Ink, coming at you with a review of Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. This is the perfect embodiment of what I call sequel acceptance. That's a phrase I made up to describe people cutting a sequel slack simply because it's better than other sequels out there. I see the same thing happening with Jurassic World. No, it's not as good as Jurassic Park but it's better than Jurassic Park 2 and 3, so we'll give it a break. To that, I say... Revenge of the Sith is objectively not a good film. It contains many of the same flaws as the others, and we had just sort of accepted them when this film was released. The mind-numbing CGI was still there, the poor dialogue was still there, the poor acting was still there, and the nonsensical plot was the worst it had ever been. But people cut it some slack because the opening shot was cool, and Grievous' lightsaber trick was clever, and a lot of loose ends got tied up, and the movie was dark. That last point is important to note. It's dark. What does that mean? Why does that make the film good? Since when has a film's tone been indicative of its quality? I would argue that Revenge of the Sith is the darkest of all six Star Wars films, and it's certainly not as good as the other three. The same, too, can be said about Attack of the Clones. I find that film to be darker than at least A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. Does that give it merit, too? Tone is just that. Tone. It's not an indication of quality. So saying a film is better because it's darker is like saying a car is more fuel efficient because it's blue. Now you may be saying that this film needed to be dark because it's about a fallen hero, someone we used to admire betraying his friends and falling victim to unfortunate circumstance. This is true, but the execution of this film, and its predecessors, makes the dark tone somewhat ill-fitted for the story. What do I mean by that? Anakin sucks, and Darth Vader's cool. It's as simple as that. A common complaint of the prequels is that Anakin is a whiny kid that annoys people. A common praise for Vader is that he is super awesome and everyone loves him. The dark, depressing, sad tone does not fit the transition from A to B. We, as moviegoers, want to see Anakin turn into Vader because we all like Vader so much more. The film uses sad music and cheap tricks to make us feel like it's a sad transition, but in a way we're relieved that we finally get to see our favorite villain return to the silver screen. Imagine this hypothetical. Han, Chewie, and Leia arrive at Cloud City, they walk through the doors, head to the dining room, and voila, there's Darth Vader. He kidnaps Leia, only to pay off Han. He betrays his friends because there's a price on his head and his own insecurities lead him to turn on his newfound family. That would be a devastating moment for us as viewers because we liked seeing him as a hero. He was cool, he was likable, and he was better off when he was on our side. Now obviously I like Empire the way it is, don't get me wrong. But my point is we would be saddened by that transition because we'd be seeing a character that we love disappear. In Revenge of the Sith, we are eager for the transition because we like what Anakin becomes more than we like Anakin. The sad, dark tone simply doesn't fit. What the film is forcing us to feel and what we actually feel are two different things, and it leads to a tonal inconsistency in our minds. The problem with the film's darkness doesn't end there, though. I have a big problem with this scene, too. There are too many of them. What are we going to do? Now, a few months ago, I discussed why films need to include more death. So you'd think I'd love knowing that this film had the guts to kill a room full of children. The problem with this scene is that it, again, is inconsistent with what we know about this story. When relaying to Luke the personality of his father, Obi-Wan seems to have fond memories of the person that Anakin used to be. But if my only friend murdered a group of kids, I certainly wouldn't remember him like that. That's some serial killer behavior right there, and I can't think how many good deeds could possibly undo that. If Lucas really wanted to include that scene in the film for some reason, 
Palpatine should have been the one to do it, with Anakin walking in on it disapprovingly. It all goes back to the same issues that are plaguing these films. The story is not well written and it relies on the same lazy cliches. Because of these lazy cliches, the emotions behind the story simply aren't there. We see all sorts of cheap storytelling devices and ill-fitting tones on screen and it all leads to a film that doesn't add up. But that's the sort of thing that's hard to put your finger on, so we just sort of accept it. Because no matter how out of sync it feels, it's not as bad as the other two, right? Another one of the reasons why people are so forgiving of this film is that the story takes a backseat to emotion. So even though nothing in the story makes any sense whatsoever, we can argue that the real journey of the film is its emotional core, and since that's much more amorphous than the story, it's easier to make excuses for it. But is that what we should be fighting for in films? Should we have to rationalize why a film is good and support something that, in reality, is lackluster? Of course not. We know that Hollywood can make better films. We've seen hundreds of them, and three of them have the word Star Wars in the title. We should be demanding more from Hollywood. Now, I recognize that saying this sounds like a call to arms for butthurt fanboys across the world. But at the same time, vehemently defending these films is just as bad. If you are truly a fan of movies as art, of cinema as a form of expression, then you should care and you should stop apologizing for caring. It's good that you care about films and it's good that you raise your concerns with fellow filmgoers. Because if you don't, then Hollywood will keep giving us more of... Well... And those are our thoughts on Revenge of the Sith. If you have thoughts of your own, let us know in the comments down below. And as always, for more games, comics, movies, and more, keep it right here on Nerdy Inc.